Good morning. Welcome to the garden. So you braved the horrendous weather forecast <laughs> and got here anyway. Thank you. Thanks for showing up today. I'm glad you're here with us. <clears throat> well, this evening when the Super Bowl kicks off, we're going to see both quarterbacks doing, making snap judgments as to whether or not they should follow through on the play that had been planned for that particular down. Um, and it may or may not work, and they may, may go somewhere different if, it, if they assess the situation and believe that's the way they should go. There are also officials on the field who will be making snap judgments as to where the ball is placed and uh, what kind of penalty to assess. Now, they have the advantage of having the instant replay where they can really check everything out. Now, there are other situations. It's not just always like that. For instance, um, you've probably heard a little of the hubbub over the last couple of weeks about something referred to as deflate gate. Um, now, I, I'm sure, no, I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> my guess, we don't know all the facts of the situation. We don't know exactly what went on. We don't have all the information we need, but some of us may have made some snap judgments about the integrity of the Patriots team as a result of what we, we've heard there. It's not really right, but yet that's something we do anyway. Well, that's not the only situation where that happens because, for example, if we're a leader of an organization or a company, sometimes uh, that leader has to make a snap judgment about um, maybe a personnel matter or how to ensure the health of the company, something that needs to be taken. If we're a judge in a court, um, uh, they have to, to look at all the evidence that they gather and then apply the law to it and, and render a judgment that comes there. Well, the reality is most of us probably have never quarterbacked in a Super Bowl game. I doubt seriously that we have done much um, official uh, playing, you know, acting like an official, except perhaps in a kid's game of some sort or another. Um, we may or may not have had to do that kind of thing as a leader of an organization. And, and um, we, most of us are probably not judges that, who act out in a courtroom. However, I have the sense that most of us have really perfected the art of being a little judgmental about things. Um, I read a blog where um, someone talked about a friend of, of his and she had uh, jokingly said to, to this writer um, that she would be quite relieved when she died because it would take away from her that what she called the heavy burden of judging. And she went on to say that she can only imagine lying in a hospital bed moments away from death, staring up at the ceiling and thinking, Oh, that's a hideous green color. <clears throat> well, we may or may not be able to identify with that, and yet sometimes that's exactly what happens. You see, there's a problem when we make a judgment call because we're only making it usually after a quick glance, and we decide someone or something is not right, at least by what we think is right, or, or not appropriate, at least by our standards. It's, it's in contrast to what we typically understand. And it's really um, impossible, we do it, but it's impossible to do because we are doing it just at a quick glance. And we, we don't know everything that's going on. Henry David Thoreau said, it's not what you look at that matters, it's what you see. Well, most of the time we just see the outward appearance, the superficial kind of thing, and we don't see um, deeper. We don't know what the real situation is. We don't know all the facts. We don't know what's going on with a person. And so it really is, is inappropriate for us to judge. And yet we do that all the time. Well, the Bible passage this morning is basically telling us that we shouldn't be judgmental people. This is out of Matthew's gospel. And um, our, uh, this is how it, our version reads. Don't judge so that you won't be judged you'll receive the same judgment you give. Whatever you, deal, whatever you deal out will be dealt out to you. Why do you see the splinter that's in your brother's or sister's eye, but don't notice the log in your own eye? How can you say to your brother or sister, let me take the splinter out of your eye when there's a log in your eye? You deceive yourself. First, take the log out of your eye, and then you'll see clearly to take the splinter out of your brother's or sister's eyes. Well, let's kind of think about what's, what's being said here, what's going on. This is um, uh, considered to be attributed to Jesus and a collection of his sayings. And these all fall around the whole topic of judgment. 
Now, our version doesn't put it this way, but there are other versions of this particular passage that say we're going to be judged in the same manner by God in the same measure by which we judge others. As I say, this doesn't say that. It just says that, that by the way we judge others is the way we're also going to be judged. Now, when we throw in that little element about being judged by God, that's where I have a little bit of struggle. And yet, you, you may be aware that some branches of Christianity focus on that a lot on the whole idea that God is a judging God and that there is a final judgment day in which there will be some decision thumbs up or thumbs down on us. And I, I just simply don't buy that. I don't know. Obviously, I don't know any more than anybody else knows. Um, but I really, as I've said to you before, really believe that if there is such a thing as a judgment day and if God is in any way a judgmental kind of God, then... I have to trust God because I believe that God knows me and knows you better than we know ourselves and understands, um, can judge, if you will, with that sense of deeper understanding than perhaps we judge of one another. Really, what I think this Bible passage is saying is that it's not appropriate for us to judge. We need to refrain from judging. Judging is, in fact, a, a hurtful kind of thing. And we can't judge because we simply don't know all the details, all the reality. No one has a right to judge. And when we judge, and we probably all do it, when we judge, we are um, in some ways saying that we're superior to someone else, that we're better than somebody else, that we have the right to judge. You know, frankly, it's pretty arrogant to think that because we're not better than anybody else. We're not different from anybody else. Each of us is a child of God. We're no better or worse than anybody else. Um, so probably, as the Bible passage says, we would be better served if we focused on our own shortcomings and our own faults and our own mistakes and did our best to correct those. And I have a hunch, if we really focused on our own issues, our own faults, that that would take up all the time when we would simply have no time to judge anybody else. Well, that's an important thing. But there's another problem with judging because it really infuses the environment with negativity. There's almost a toxic kind of thing that comes into, the, into the, where we are. Um, it's so negative and it's counter to the way most of us say we want to live our lives. We want to be happier people. We want to have a better life. We want the world to be a better place. And yet when we judge, we're spewing negativity into the world. And that doesn't move us in the way we want to move. So maybe what we need to do is to stop judging. But how on earth do we do that? Where do we begin? Well, I have a few hints that might be helpful. I, I guess the first thing I think we need to do is really become more self-aware and really pay attention and catch ourselves when we we know we're going down another path. Most of us know when we fall off the high road. We know when we're kind of just speaking a little nastily about something or someone, uh, or when we're thinking those kinds of thoughts. It's really about monitoring our thoughts and, and stopping before we speak and, and paying attention to that. Um, and, it, and we can do that if we just practice a little more intentionality and a little more mindfulness. So, so that's certainly one thing we can do. And with that kind of intention um, and paying better attention to what we're doing, um, maybe we can also make a shift here. If we catch ourselves being negative and have some negative thoughts, then maybe we need to be deliberate about trying to transfer those to more positive thoughts. If we look at a situation, think of what, what might be the good to come out of that situation. If we look at a person and have, are starting to make a judgment call, instead replace that with finding something good, something positive. What can we admire about this person? What comment would can we, we can make that would, be, that would be a positive thing, that would be helpful and, and more worthwhile than anything negative that we might share? So that's another way to think of that uh, intentionality. Um, something else we might do, too, is remember the little phrase, just like me. Because every time we judge anybody else, we might as well assume that we, too, have been judged at one time or another. And if that's something we've known about when it's been an obvious kind of thing, just think about it. It doesn't feel very good, does it? Why would we want to inflict that kind of pain on anyone else? And even if we did inflict that pain and did say something, 
really the person who suffers as much as anyone else is us. Um, it really is a, a, a crack in the armor. There is a sort of a character flaw there. So it's important that we um, think about the ways in which we are alike more than the ways in which we're different and kind of put ourselves in someone else's place. There's yet something else that I think we can think about, and when we are quick to, to assess the situation and decide it's the wrong step, maybe we just need to back off a little bit and reframe the situation. Because someone is doing something or acting in a way that we wouldn't doesn't mean it's necessarily wrong. There's often more than one right answer. There's more than one right solution to an issue. So it's a matter of cutting one another a little bit of slack, giving one another a little space there, offering grace instead of condemnation. And so it really doesn't hurt to do that at all. The Dalai Lama has said these words, people take different roads seeking fulfillment and happiness. Just because they're not on your road doesn't mean they've gotten lost. Well, that's true when it comes to a lot of things, and it's certainly true when it comes to judging. So how about it? How about we focus on trying to improve ourselves, to better ourselves and our lives, and cut others some slack? And as a result, I think we'll have a little better life. What do you think? I'd like to introduce to you Mike Hurdle, who um, is a part of our leadership team, the Garden Leadership Team, uh, who's going to share with you a brief update about the, the transition process that we're in the midst of. And um, these folks will all be available over at the Chili Cook-Off, which is another thing to lure you there. Uh, Chili Cook-Off over at St. Luke's afterwards. Mike? Good morning, everybody. Um, as Linda said, I am Mike Hurdle, and I'm a member of the uh, leadership team here at the Garden, and a uh, longtime member, not quite one of the founding folks, but uh, I think it's been about 17 or 18 years that I've been active here. So I'm glad to be a part of this, and uh, I uh, will be talking for a couple minutes this morning about not making snap judgments. So um, in keeping with the theme, I'll try to go the other direction. I um, wanted to take a few minutes to talk and, and provide you an update on our search for a new pastor. Uh, the communication that we've had over the last 10 months with the bishop's office who will be intimately involved in this process with us and our ongoing discussions with our friends and colleagues over at St. Luke's uh, on our future and current relationships with them. Uh, in the spring of uh, last year, the leadership team became aware of Linda's uh, uh, projected retirement date just a few months before you all found out in September. And we began our discussions about uh, how, how we might go about finding a replacement for um, a, such a long-term person and uh, uh, leader as Linda, who was the founder of the garden and, and has been our senior pastor all these years. At that time, we prepared planning documents, a job description, communication plan, and a variety of other documents to help us think and talk through the process. Linda has been involved uh, since that time in the, in the discussion and the drafting of all of this. In May of last year, and I may have told you all this when we did our last brief update of 2014, we began a series of meetings with the bishop's office, Bishop Coiner. Uh, that was the first, and that actually involved St. Luke's representatives as well as garden folks. Uh, we've since had two additional meetings with the bishop to continue to talk about transition, leadership, and how that might come about. The last of these meetings occurred in December of last year, just a month ago. We've also stayed in touch with uh, Bishop Pointer by email and phone and um, have uh, main, maintained good, I, what I consider good communication with his office. In August of last year, we began a series of meetings with the uh, board leadership at St. Luke's. And, uh, the, uh, the, it actually involved a committee that had been appointed by the board to specifically help and talk with us about the transition and how that might be handled. Um, 
I think it's important to uh, remind all of you, if, if you don't know or may have known and forgotten, that St. Luke's has been a very significant partner in the ministry of the garden uh, since its very beginning. They uh, uh, underwrite uh, Linda's salary and her benefits. They provide us space uh, for offices and meetings over in, at St. Luke's on uh, 86th Street. And they also have provided some added support in the way of bookkeeping and that sort of thing. So uh, the partnership is, is a meaningful and realistic uh, relationship that is more than just talk. Our discussions uh, with St. Luke's uh, during these last several months um, were intended to talk about those things that we hold in common uh, as well as our differences in um, where we've been up through the last 19 and a half years and where we might, might be going and particularly going forward together. Our wish has always been and continues to be to find a way for that to happen uh, so that our forward path is a path uh, that we hold in common. Uh, last week we had a uh, note from the board following a retreat that they were having actually a couple days ago now uh, and the, the board at St. Luke's uh, has asked uh, us to seek additional input and opinion from those of you that attend here at the garden on a regular basis about, uh, about that path forward. And so we are, I wanted to let you know this morning that we will be preparing uh, some type of background document to uh, provide you added information about these talks and the choices that we're facing in the coming months prior to Linda's retirement. So uh, we're, we're thinking right now that's probably going to come in the form of a survey, and you're likely to uh, see that um, forthcoming in the next two or three weeks. So we're, we are trying to bring things to a head and uh, clarify, and we certainly want to seek and uh, secure your input in that process. Um, we, uh, a couple things that, that we're considering and uh, wanted to make you aware of that is that in this process, we're trying to discern uh, whether or not to continue and how to continue in our relationship with St. Luke's versus uh, uh, going forward as a independent church. And uh, we are uh, on any given Sunday, 400, 450 members here at the garden and uh, the size and the scope of what we do and how, and how, we, um, how we worship, how we uh, do church is different enough that uh, we wanted to talk further about that and how that might uh, continue forward. So that's what we'll be seeking some advice and counsel from all of you on. Um, the group, uh, the leadership from the garden will be available uh, after this service this morning. We're, we're all going to be, or most of us will be over at the Chili Cook-Off uh, and will be available in the next several Sundays to um, answer questions or provide added clarification on current thinking and what our thoughts are. I'd like to just take a moment to um, have the, the uh, leadership team that's present this morning stand up. Um, I think there's six or seven present. Um, Rob French, I know, is here. Betty Ellison, uh, Mike Ransom up in the back. Um, Beth Freed, where's Beth? Uh, you all know. She's the one with the whistle. Um, uh, Linda, of course, is here. Uh, Bob uh, Blake over there. Sue, is Sue here? How's your mom? Good, good. Uh, and I'm part of that, and uh, I think that's pretty much it. So there's, uh, uh, there's eight of us on a good day, and uh, we all managed to get out here in spite of the multiple inches of snow. So... Um, I, uh, I liked the music this morning and uh, Linda Newell sang a song that had a, a couple lines in it that hit home for me uh, about, uh, it, it's, I think it said something like, it's a fine line, it's a very fine line. And uh, those of us that have been kind of talking and wrestling with all of this the last several months, 
uh, have continued to kind of look at and weigh and talk about pros and cons of all, all of this going forward. And uh, we'd like you to join us in that, uh, in that gray area in the coming weeks to help us uh, continue to sort out uh, what the ba best path forward is for us. So we look forward to the uh, opportunities to work and talk with you about this. And uh, we'd like uh, you to uh, consider yourselves a member of this team and, uh, that, and recognize that your input's valued and uh, hope you'll join us in the next several weeks as we kind of bring this thing to a head a little bit and uh, continue forward. I would mention, and I, I meant to say this earlier, um, we actually have a half a dozen people that we consider garden-like in their theology and their approach and philosophy. We don't know that any particular one of those individuals uh, would necessarily be the, the final choice for the next pastor, but there, there are people that we think are consistent with our values, our mission, our vision, and uh, we've talked with the bishop about those individuals. In fact, some of those names came from him, and um, we, uh, we think we have a, a good group of people and, and certainly a good sense of direction about that. So we've not been idle. It's not just been all talk, and... Uh, We'll be glad to talk further with you individually or small groups after, again, after this morning's uh, service or over at the uh, party this afternoon. So please join us and thank you.